Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next presentation on our uh, YouTube channel here at Cybertech. Uh, today, the topic is going to be uh, within group. Uh, we've seen recently uh, that a couple of support customers has asked, uh, have asked us about this uh, SQL thing. And I thought I would um, give a small presentation about this feature, which is not uh, widely known, obviously, by users. So let's dig in and uh, see what we can do with that one. Before we get started, uh, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Hans-Jürgen Schönig. I've been in uh, professional Postgres since uh, 1999. And uh, we're running a Postgres support company, which is uh, serving uh, customers uh, all over the globe. Um, and uh, as I said before, we've specialized on Postgres for more than 20 years. And uh, as part of this series, uh, my aim is uh, to show you some uh, of those more advanced uh, SQL features. So I hope you like it. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to share them in the comment section and uh, feel free to get in touch with us, uh, share feedback, you know, share the video, uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, let's get started. So ordered sets. Uh, basically ordered sets are quite similar to, to ordinary aggregations. Uh, there are just some small differences uh, people are usually not aware of. So um, let's see what we can do here. So. If you have a normal group by statement, what you do is basically you turn a set of rows into one row. So in this case, uh, the example says group by department ID. So if you got a thousand rows for every department, you will turn it into one row per department. So the basic idea of an aggregation is to turn many rows into groups. Okay, so you got the average salary per department, um, in, for this list of employees. So that's basically how it works. That's a standard basic aggregation, okay? So I assume that uh, people watching uh, this channel or who are uh, somewhat familiar with SQL basically know what, it, uh, what this means. So within group, if you're running uh, a standard aggregation such as sum, count, average, mean, max, et cetera, the order in which you feed data to the aggregation does not matter at all. So if you count values, uh, you just add them up, right? You say plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. The order in which you are doing this kind of aggregation really makes absolutely no difference. So if you count them, you can count the small ones first, the big ones first, makes no difference whatsoever. The difference between a standard aggregate and an ordered set is that in case of an ordered set, order does matter. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, but before we do that, we, we should load some sample data uh, into our database so that we have something we can, uh, we can basically uh, work with. So I'm using my standard uh, data set here. It's, uh, it's basically some, some data about the oil production uh, of the world. So what we got here is uh, the region, uh, the country, you know, the year, production, consumption. And what the system basically does is here, we use the copy command as the super user to directly load uh, the data from, uh, from this, uh, this URL into the table. So at the end of the day, we're going to have 644 rows in our database. So we got data for a couple of regions, a couple of years, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let's look at the, at the, uh, at the sample data here. Uh, what we got here is a couple of rows for United States from uh, 1965 onwards, all the way up to, I believe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 2005 or, or so, okay? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's super important that, that you have a bit of an understanding of this data. So uh, let's take a look at a simple uh, example here. So what you see here is we are grouping by country and uh, we do that for, uh, for three countries. So it's Iran, Iraq, USA. So it's gonna be for three countries. And what, we cal what we're calculating here uh, is, the, uh, is, the, uh, is the average uh, value. So the average value of production is gonna be 3.6 million for Iran, uh, 1.7 million barrels of oil for Iraq, 9.1 uh, million uh, barrels for uh, for the USA. 
Okay, what we got here is basically the, the average production for Iran, which is gonna be 3.6 million barrels per day uh, for Iraq, which is uh, 1.8 million barrels per day, and the same for the US for uh, 9.1 million barrels per day. But that's the average value. So if one person earns one euro and one person earns a million, the average is gonna be uh, one, uh, 500,000, right? So what we're trying to calculate here is the median, so the median value. So what's the median value? Suppose somebody earns one euro, second person is gonna earn three euros, and the third person is gonna earn a million, the average would be 300 something, but the median would be three. So one, three, one million, the median is really the middle value. Okay, so if you order the data according to income, production, whatever, the median value is you take this set of data and you go into the middle of, the, of this ordered set of data and you pick that value. Okay, so in case of one, three, one, one million, the median would be three, the average would be 300,000. So if you calculate the median for income, Right, it's it's like five hundred thousand people earning more than you, and five hundred thousand people earning less than you. Okay, so it's the median value. Okay, and the way you do that is for each group, you you order the data by production, and then you go fifty percent into the group. Okay, so you take your ordered set of let's say uh, a million entries, you skip five hundred thousand, and then you take these entries. Okay, and that's the median value. It has nothing to do with the average. Uh, in my case here, uh, the average and the median are pretty close. But if you're looking at uh, income uh, distributions all over the world, you will see that the average is usually a lot higher than the median. So you've got a couple of people which earn a um, thousand euros, but you, you've got one millionaire. Okay, so the median is going to be a lot lower usually than the average. Okay, I, I think I remember data from Switzerland where the median. Uh, where the average income is two and a half times higher than the average income, okay? Because there are just uh, a few people earning, let's say, a billion, and they're going to increase this, uh, this average uh, more than, than you would expect, right? So the way you do that is percentile discrete. Within the group, we're going to order by production, and we're going to go 50% into this group, okay? This is a, how an ordered set is structured. It's like a, it's like a group buy. But it's a group by statement uh, along with, with ordering, okay? Because for the median, order does matter, okay? That's the core idea. So, uh, as I said before, the median is the middle value. It's within a group. And what we do here is we go 50% into the group and this percentile discrete is, is gonna give us a value that really does exist, okay? So the percentile discrete value, what we get back from this function is a value that does really exist, which of course creates a bit of a problem. Let's take a look at, uh, at this data set. Um, so what we do here is let's take a look at the from clause first, right? So the from clause says from generate series one to six. Okay, so obviously what we got here is six values, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we take the median, there is no such thing as a real median because with six values, there is no such thing as the middle value, okay? Because it, 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 it's, it's an even number. So what we see here is that percentile discrete is gonna create a real value, which is free. So it's gonna take uh, basically the third entry and percentile continuous is gonna give us a synthetic value. So obviously, the two middle values are three and four, and it's gonna take 3.5, which really does not exist in the data set, okay? And it's gonna take that as the middle value, okay? So percentile continuous is uh, useful for a very small data set. It's gonna give you a synthetic value and percentile discrete, if you have a million values, you really don't care if you're off by one or something, right? So it's a real value, okay? So that's, that's uh, a big distinction here. Which, which you should be aware of. But the logic is the same. You order within the group. And what you see here is there's no need for a group by. So if it's only one column of data, uh, and if you don't want to turn it into groups, uh, we're gonna do the same thing with one group, okay? But usually it's associated with a group by statement. I just didn't do that here 
to make it more easier and to show you that those functions also work uh, if there's only one group, okay? So let's move on to, to one of my favorite features in all of SQL, which is uh, the notion of a hypothetical aggregate. So a hypothetical aggregate is what you would call the as if concept. So suppose we're counting values, right? So it's one to six again. And then we say, okay, suppose a value of 3.7 would exist. It doesn't exist, but suppose there was a value which is 3.7. What rank would it be? So if we insert it, one, two, three, 3.7, 3 four, five, six into this data set, it would be the fourth entry. So if hypothetically speaking, 3.7 would be there, it would be the fourth value in the row. So that's an hypothetical uh, aggregate. It's, it's basically the same. It's like a, you, you, put a, you pass a synthetic value to the rank function, and then you just try to find out, given the order in the within group statement, um, which rank would it be uh, at the end of the day. So that's a hypothetical aggregate, but it, it's basically the same concept as this whole ordered, uh, ordered set uh, thing that you order inside the group and you perform some calculations on this order, okay? So that's basically it. So the conclusion is uh, within group is just like a normal uh, aggregate, but it needs ordering, right? It, it, it's the same thing. It needs special functions. So you cannot do this on sum, mean, max, et cetera. And uh, they can be mixed within the same query. So what you've seen before is with the count function, with the percentile function, you can all do it within the same uh, query. Uh, Postgres is gonna take care of that uh, perfectly. So finally, uh, I hope you liked uh, this uh, this video. Uh, there is more to come on our uh, YouTube channel, so make sure you hit uh, the subscribe button and ring the bell. Uh, also follow us on uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook. And if there are any questions, uh, if you need help, if you need support, if you want to migrate from Oracle, so just feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us uh, through the website. Um, so I hope you like the show and uh, tell all your friends about our YouTube channel and we're looking forward to seeing you again. Have a nice day.